Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew and in this video about JetForm plugin I'll explain and demonstrate the advanced form validation functionality. While default validation offers basic feedback to users if the input doesn't meet the criteria, the advanced option enables more complex rules and enhanced protection, allowing for incomparable form customization and improved user experience. As always, I encourage you to post your questions and comments under the video and sign up to Crocoblock channel to stay informed about new features of our plugins. Once you're in the JetForm Builder editor, navigate to the right-hand side panel containing the JetForm settings and open the validation section. Here you will find the validation settings that apply to the entire form. We'll discuss field-specific rules later in this video. The three toggles in this section are for adding an extra layer of security to the form. The first one enables the usage of a WordPress nonce, a unique value created for the form and checked with the form submission. However, the website's catching solutions may interfere with this functionality leading to errors. The next toggle enables cross-site request forgery protection to prevent possible malicious websites open in the same user's browser as the site with the form from stealing user information or initiating unauthorized actions. The third option enables honeypot protection, which involves creating an invisible field that users cannot fill but spam bots can. If this field is filled, the form rejects the submission. This functionality has a similar purpose to CAPTCHA but doesn't require interaction from users. After these form safety toggles, you have two choices regarding validation types. Default option utilizes the native validation provided by the browser. This includes providing messages for users when they incorrectly fill in fields for inputting email or attempt to submit a form without filling in the required fields. And to unlock all the customization possibilities for this current form, hit Advanced and then the Edit Validation Messages buttons. Let me walk you through all validation options for the various field types. Field is empty. Here you can enter a message that will appear if the required field is left blank when the user hits the Submit button or you can leave the default Please fill out this field message. All the other field validation options we are going to discuss are also pre-filled with their relevant messages. Additionally, on the right side of this pop-up window you can see icons representing the types of fields to which the rules apply. For field is empty, the rule is applicable to all field types, so there is no icons displayed for this option. Email is not valid is for a message that pops up if a user enters an incorrect email format into an email type text field. URL is not valid. Similarly, for incorrectly formatted web addresses, the input will not be validated and users will see the messages entered here. Input mask is not completed is for fields that require specific input formats, such as for a phone number. When users enter the text that is not according to the specific input mask, the message entered here alerts them. The following three options relate to media fields with restrictions on the maximum number of files maximum file size, and allowed file types. The default messages for size and number of files contain macros that will correctly display the requirements you set up in the field settings. The next two fields allow you to create messages for cases when you have numeric or range fields with minimum or maximum value restrictions, and the default messages that are here already contain the necessary macros as well. Not enough characters and character limit exceeded are for text fields and text areas where the character limit is not met or exceeded. The final two options are for fields that allow users to input time or date but the entered timestamp falls outside the specific range. I didn't make any adjustments to the pre-written advanced validation messages. If you do, ensure to click the update button when you're finished. Now let me add several fields to the form so I can proceed to explaining specific validation rules for the individual form fields and then we'll check the advanced validation functionality on the front page. When you open the individual field block settings tab, you'll see a validation section where you can switch between three validation types that will affect only this specific form field. They are inherit, default and advanced types. The first option inherits advanced validation rules from the form, the ones that we overviewed before. 
However, it also allows you to additionally customize the field by adding rules. Clicking the Add New button opens a pop-up window with advanced rules settings. These settings enable us to create additional messages displayed for users when specific circumstances are met. We determine these circumstances by setting up rules. The top drop-down menu allows you to choose a rule type. For example, the first one is for displaying an additional message if the content inserted by a user is equal to some other content which we define in the following steps. After choosing any of the rule types, we can specify the source of values for comparison. The first option is Custom Value, which enables manual input of the value in the text area field below. Alternatively, users can click the Coin Shape button to select values from various post and user properties, meta fields, or query variable names. You can also input macros of different fields in the form, which can be easily accessed by clicking the Wrench Shape button. Or you can connect to the field values by selecting a specific field from the drop-down menu above. Other than the equals rule type, the following options are available. Must contain characters, must not contain characters, matches, doesn't match regular expressions, and server-side callback. The contain, doesn't contain characters options are self-explanatory. However, let's briefly discuss the options related to regular expressions. Regular expressions provide a standardized syntax for creating search patterns. In some ways, this rule type functions similarly to the input mask feature, but allows for the creation of more advanced patterns, such as requiring specific character types and input lengths simultaneously. For example, you can use this functionality to enforce password requirements, such as a minimum of 8 characters, starting with the capital letter and containing at least one digit. When users fail to meet these criteria, the error message will notify them that the password is not secure until they follow the specified instructions. You can easily find the specific regular expressions you need by searching online like I did. Let's also apply the equals validation rule to the following confirm password field and make a relevant error message. The last rule type that I did mention is a server-side callback, which allows inputting custom server-side functions to validate form input. These functions can check inputs against database records and validate field input if true is returned. There are two useful pre-built functions available for checking if the user login or email is unique. This was a review of inherit validation type for blocks. As mentioned, it aligns the block validation settings with general advanced form validation settings while allowing the addition of custom rule-based validation requirements. At the bottom of the validation section, you can see which general form validation settings apply to the block and the error messages that can be triggered by them. The second block-specific validation type is default, which excludes the block from the advanced validation settings and applies native validation by the browser. The third type is Advanced, which respects the previously assigned advanced form validation settings and rules but also allows modification of the error messages. This is helpful when you want to quickly set up general input validation settings for the form but also want to adjust specific messages to help users fill in the form. For example, I have a passport text field with an activated input mask for checking if the input text matches the format of US passports. By default, there is a standard message that notifies users if they fail to match the input mask. However, for regular user, the message may be confusing, so I'll change it to a clear explanation message. This is not a valid US passport format. If I use this message at the form level validation settings section, it would apply to all fields with the input masks. Similarly, I can modify error messages for each field to provide better user experience and personalization. Let's now navigate to a page where this form is inserted and observe how the form validation settings would function for a user. The first field doesn't have specific validation requirements other than the presence of any content inserted here. So if we try to submit the form now or if we simply click on the field and then proceed to the next one without filling it in, 
will see an error message, please fill out this field as set in the form level validation settings. The next field requires an email address and the error message is displayed until we input a text with the email format. The passport number field has an input mask containing numeric and alphabetical characters at certain positions, so the input is not validated until the user provides the content in the correct format. The input mask prevents the input from incorrect character types, but if the user leaves the input unfinished, the custom error message created earlier for this field block will be displayed. The next field is creating using a media field block. It restricts users from downloading more than two files, which must be in one of the image formats. Additionally, the size of the files should not exceed 3 MB. The file manager already filters and displays only relevant file types. However, we can still attempt to attach a file of the wrong type and see an exclamation mark along with the custom error message. Similarly, if we exceed the file size limit, another custom error message will appear. If we attempt to upload more than three images, we'll see an error message asking us to reduce the number of files. The macros used for the message will accurately indicate how many images should be uploaded and how many we are trying to upload. The next numeric field is intended for noting an age and allows input ranging from 18 to 65. If we attempt to input a number lower or higher than this range, we'll see different relevant error messages that we specifically created for this field block. For creating a username, I added another text field with a minimum character limit. If the input is too short, the user will see the relevant error message. The field for choosing a date has a starting limit to disallow selecting dates before June 1, 2024. If such dates are selected, an error message will be displayed. Finally, there are two fields for users to create a password. The first field, as you remember, has a custom advanced rule created with the use of a regular expression code, requiring a minimum 8 characters password, including at least one digit and the first letter capitalized. As soon as we start typing the field, we'll see a message with these requirements, which will disappear once we fulfill them. The second password field will match the input against the value in the previous field and will show the error message until the two passwords match. The validation settings included with the JetForm Builder plugin offer robust options for enhancing form security, adding new functionality and guiding users through the submission process. As you can see, these settings are highly detailed and can be combined in numerous ways to address various scenarios. Additionally, the visual appearance of the messages can be fully customized using the JetStyle Manager plugin. If you have any ideas or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to share your thoughts, and if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Crocoblock channel. See you next time!